you very much, Chair. Uh, Professor Travers, many of us have noted that uh, some of the most deprived areas have actually seen the largest cuts uh, within uh, government spending since 2020, uh, since 2010. Um, including my own Slough constituency, which according to the Centre for uh, City Studies uh, noted that uh, despite having areas of, of uh, high deprivation, social deprivation, they've actually experienced some of the largest cuts uh, within the whole of the South East. Um, however, can you please clarify whether those areas uh, have actually got significantly more money between 2000 and 2010? What happened is at the beginning of the period in which we're discussing, and it's certainly in the early years, and it, the policy changed somewhat afterwards, mm -hmm. um, that the government reduced funding for local government. So that, you know, given that at that time there were three sources of funding, really, uh, council tax, business rates, and at that time still rather more grant than there is today. And the way the grant was reduced, because of the, that's the way... Uh, at that time, actually, it was just grant and council tax business rates come later, in fact. Um, the way grant was reduced had a greater impact on councils, in fact, that were more grant dependent. That was the way the grant reduction was made. Now, that, in effect, meant that, uh, that authorities that received most grant, which tend to be higher spending <coughs> ones because it was based on needs and resources, but particularly need equalisation, tended to see, and have tended over the longer period, to see their spending fall by a larger percentage from the, begin the starting point for overall spending. In fact, the policy changed somewhat later and became uh, more uh, evenly spread. But the, if you look at the impact over the whole period from 2010-11 to today, your point is well made. And there are charts, not in my evidence, but other evidence that show that precisely. Okay. Uh, Mr. Whiteman, uh, in terms of absolute spending power, uh, in your opinion, do those poorer areas still have uh, you know, more money to spend? I, 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 think, um, I think it's difficult to, to give a, a rule that sort of shorthand that, that covers everybody. On the whole, areas that have tended to lose more grant because they are more grant, they were more grant dependent have less spending power, kept you know, all other things being equal, but, but not always. You know, there, are, there are some authorities in that, in that category that still have um, relatively, relatively good uh, spending power or their financial resilience overall still looks very healthy if you look at um, the degree to which they've felt the need to raise council tax or, or other factors. But on the whole, yes, okay. their, their spending power has, in relative terms, gone down because they were more, as Professor Traffer said, they were more dependent on grant, which tended not, tended not to favour them over that period. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why many of them are, are indeed struggling uh, more than many of their other counterparts. Uh, Professor Murphy, let's uh, explore that a bit more. Uh, in your opinion, is deprivation a good indicator of spending needs? And if so, um, which councils, uh, in your opinion, are struggling at the moment? Right. Um, <clears throat> well, can I just make a point that kind of breaches the previous one? Um, and it's, a, a, it's an obvious point, but I think it needs to be made. And that's my recollection of receiving spending uh, announcements every year and having to de deal with it on, on the ground was that I never went through one year that wasn't different from the one be before, that it changed all the time, and that because an awful lot of your spending in a council is in effect committed, the amount of flexibility you have is severely reduced. So the amount, although there may not seem great big changes in the general weightings overall, they can be very significant on the ground, and they are very significant for on the, on the ground for, all, for most local authorities, for all local authorities. Small changes, what appear to be small changes, in reality have big consequences at the local level. Um, and the second, second thing is that um, there will undoubtedly be people, and I think um, Northamptonshire for, for one would be one, that would say they did poorly in both those, uh, not only inter-year things, but inter-decade things, and they would point quite legitimately 
um, to the growth, major growth area and the demographic changes that happened in Northamptonshire, where there is significant growth area. And the whole of the weightings does not, did not, they would say, um, recompense them for those services they, they had to provide. So my, my biggest point would be it's very complex. It's not that simple. And small changes can mean significant for individual council. The, 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 the index of multiple deprivation has been developed over 30, 40 years. And it has served us well over those 30, 40 years. Um, and it has, not, it has changed all the time, the indices and what comes in and out. Is, is pretty sensitive and sophisticated now. So the index of multiple declaration is a relatively good, a relatively good measure. So my answer to you would be careful about the details, but yes, in general, it is a good indicator. It's a good indicator. Yeah. Um, Mr. Uh, Amin Smith, um, the Institute for Fiscal Studies, uh, obviously of which you're a member, uh, noted that the councils facing the greatest problems tended to be county councils which had not actually experienced the greatest cuts. Can you actually substantiate that with some detail uh, on why that may actually be the case? Yeah, um, so I think it's worth saying first that I think the most high profile cases of councils in financial difficulty have been county councils, so Northamptonshire, Surrey. Um, it's slightly less clear whether in general counties ha have struggled more with delivering cuts than other types of councils over the past decade. Um, some SIP for work looking at reserves shows that um, counties tend to have lower reserves relative to their spending than other councils, but actually if you look at the rate at which councils are depleting their reserves, it's not clear that counties are going to deplete theirs quicker than other upper tier authorities. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of why, to the extent that counties have struggled more, in terms of why that is, um, relative to district authorities, clearly county councils have responsibility for adult social care and social care in general, which councils have tried to protect, mm -hmm. which makes it that bit harder to deliver cuts. Um, relative to other upper tier authorities, you might think that because counties provide fewer other services, they have less flexibility to make cuts elsewhere while still protecting social care. But again, it's not clear that unit trees and uh, metropolitan boroughs have actually made greater cuts to other services than districts have. Mm -hmm. And so that potentially suggests that maybe there are kind of political or institutional reasons why county councils have been less able to deliver cuts than other areas. Perhaps they have more engaged electorates um, that are less willing to tolerate the level of cuts required. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, oh, yeah, Mr. Well, I'm, I'm, whatever I say here, I'll, I'll upset somebody in, in Go on, one, anyway. one of my <laughs> one of my one of my one of my colleagues across the sector somewhere. <laughs> uh, on the whole, I, I think the counties are are under, in, in relative terms, the greatest pressure when I look at their budgets, and I think that's because remember, most councils are spending more on children's services, for example and they have diverted money into children's services by making bigger cuts in other areas and very often counties don't provide the services which have tended to be cut by a bigger amount and so they're, they're dealing with the pressures, adult, adults and children's, without, without the ability to direct money from cutting the other services by an even greater degree. And so, again, there are, there are cases I can think of that would vary from what I've just said, but on the whole, I think counties are, are under a particular amount of pressure. Okay, I would, you. I would concur with that. It's yeah. just one of the points that you might like to take into account, because although it might not have come out um, to date, the lack of flexibility of, on the county council versus a, a unitary because you're spread across a number of services and the services that the public are most interested in in county councils it's undoubtedly social social care but you they've also lost um, recently lost the two of the seven spending blocks they used to have in my day namely they've lost the police authority money and they've lost the fire authority money mm -hmm. so that their flexibility has been reduced even more okay thank you very much just one final point, really. It's worth adding that, in effect, needs and resources equalisation, particularly needs equalisation, has effectively been frozen since 2011. And whilst that doesn't answer this question precisely, it must mean some authorities would otherwise have needs and resources been revised 
in the meantime, some would now have more money and others would have less. I mean, it's, I can't say which, whether it would be Slough or urban or rural authorities, but clearly over that seven or eight year period, there will have been shifts in, given we have a broad, broadly equalised base between authorities, that would have changed had equalisation kept pace. Right. 